Everybody does it. I wasn't original. I wasn't unique. I never was. I was just frustrated, confused, and completely lost. I was also the stereotype in the flash. Gymnast, captains, two or years running, and it was over. Gymnastics had defined me for as long as I could remember. I was proud of my square upper body and torso, and legs that could kick a hockey player's ass. No, oh, really, I saw a chiropractor who was impressed by my hip flexors and would tell other patients. He had a running laugh with a hockey player he treated, who would grip the table with all his strength in an attempt to avoid being marked weaker in any area than a five foot two inch gymnast. I lost gymnastics and I lost control. The conflict with my gymnastics coach, more or less the amount of time I had to spend with him all year, was enough to keep me from going out for track my senior year. He became girls track head coach that year. My father attempted to bribe me with the crews if I went out for track. He stressed physical fitness, and still does. He couldn't have a sedentary daughter, which was apparently his fear. The frosting was the stress he put on my diet, though it really only consisted of cursing my eating Twinkies and quicker dips. He was right. I wouldn't have the same body if I weren't a gymnast anymore. I was going to be doing gymnastics in I wasn't going to be doing gymnastics in college. Everyone gains the freshman 15. I sure as hell wasn't going to. The summer before, I took off a considerable amount of weight. I began running and limiting my caloric intake to, well, 300, though I would have one to two binges a week because of it. I went to school happy to have slimmed down and could reclaim the name Little Debbie that I had adopted in junior high. That was my goal. I was still terrified of the freshman 15. I lived off salads in the cap cafeteria and was a religious user of the rack. Still, it was nothing spectacular. I continued to lose weight until my butt was flat, and that was my pride. I went home for Christmas break and worried the rents. Uh, because of that, I ended up putting on weight to a point of misery, and when I returned to school, positioned all of my heart and soul into taking it off again. At the same time, I decided to enroll in a May-term supper program in Spain. This seemed like a good idea at the time. Unfortunately, I had become entirely dependent on the gym as a coping mechanism for stress, and when I arrived in Toledo, I realized these people didn't exercise the same way. I found a path to run, but refused to eat anything but salted vegetables and apples while I was there. I wouldn't go to the bars because I couldn't risk the alcoholic calories. It was, it's, it was in Spain that I began regularly throwing up. I wasn't eating much, but if I diverged from the vegetables and apples, it came up. By the end of the trip, the skirts I brought wouldn't stay up and, unless I tied scarves that I had to buy on the streets around my waist to keep them there. When I returned home, I spent the duration of my summer living in my parents' home. Their concerns seemed unwarranted. My dad would yell at me for getting really skinny, and my mom would cry. I worked at a child care program for the summer with different camp themes weekly. One week, I was summer theater camp, and the kids needed costumes. We cut material to be tied around some of the kids' waists and tested them on me. My boss questioned the accuracy of that. She told me that I was smaller around than any of them. The worst part was that it was true, and they were 9 and 10 years old. I was 19. By August, I had gotten to a point of desperation. I threw up almost everything I ate and didn't eat that much. I finally made an appointment with the Eating Disorders Institute in my hometown, but only had the time to meet with the therapist twice before I had to go back to school. When I came back to school, I avoided searching out a new therapist for a while. I went into Boynton, but the woman I spoke with told me that she didn't believe I actually wanted to get better, and I left her office in tears. A month later, I showed up at a friend's door in tears. I'd started bleeding, and I knew I couldn't handle it. I had lost significant weight, and my friends commented on it when I did return to school, and I knew I was getting out of control. At that point, my friends helped me. My friend helped me enroll in a program in Minneapolis. They tried to suggest it inpatient several times, but I couldn't afford to miss school. I did it on my own in an intensive outpatient setting, but I finally started to turn around. I ate a grilled cheese sandwich last Friday night.